Welcome to the Nuclear Snail channel. Today, camouflage fabric is our topic. Uh, there is a lot of confusion about this, there is a lot of do and don't rules, so I wanted to talk the talk and walk the walk regarding camouflage fabric and how to mod it right. Uh, at least what I think is right, because obviously all of this stuff is subjective. But let's start exactly with that. Uh, why is camouflage fabric so frowned upon in a lot of post-apocalyptic uh, LARPs and festivals and other settings? Maybe except very early zombie apocalypse. Uh, one of the reasons or main reason for that is that a lot of times people who are new to the genre uh, think way too practically and do not think about the story and the aesthetics and they will a lot of times just grab some army surplus either because it's cheap or some people will even in invest a lot of money into expensive, very good tactical gear and then leave it pristine because that's what you would want to wear in a real apocalypse. Now, I will not go too deep into that. I have made a separate topic, a separate video about the topic of realism. You can watch that if you want. But long story short, uh, while there could be some situations where unmodified camouflage fabric like you see right now, which is completely new and doesn't look like it has taken any damage, might be justified. In 99.9% .9 of cases, you want to avoid that. And in today's video, we're going to leave a part of this fabric covered up with duct tape, which we will remove at the end for comparison. Uh, a part of it will receive light distressing, like something that a soldier or someone wearing a tactical uniform uh, would look like uh, actually realistically and more aesthetically pleasing in a low apocalypse scenario, such as zombie apocalypse, just not on the first day of it. And then the rest of it will get really destroyed. So we will be t using this um, Flecktarn German fabric, as you can see here. This is a piece of a German uniform. Um, you can, of course, apply these techniques to any other camouflage pattern. You might need to vary your um, paints, their, the color of your paint, depending, or maybe not. So just, you know, be able to interpolate a bit just because I'm showing it on flag turn doesn't mean it doesn't work on other things. So let's begin with just doing our standard program. And what is the standard program? Well, as usual, I have black and those are fabric paints, by the way. I have black fabric paint. I have white fabric paint. I have, um, I think this is swamp colored. So similar to this. And we have our uh, sandy, wastelandy mix of fabric paints here, which is a mix of yellow, red, and black in uh, proportions that I happened to find out are to my liking. And you can easily do that by just buying fabric paints and mixing your own tones. Or you're lucky and you happen to find a good tone. Now, before we start, a very important aesthetic point about this. Uh, this fabric is designed, or this pattern is designed to break up the visual cohesion, right? It's designed to hide the form of the soldier in the bushes and whatnot. So that is achieved by having a lot of blobs here and there uh, of different color. They are of different color and they uh, really, if you look really at the borders of them, they are strongly different uh, colors that contrast in a lot of cases, such as this black, contrast this green and stuff. But when you zoom out, out of this, it all just breaks down into this kind of mishmash kind of thing. So what uh, I like to do with camouflage fabric is bring back a bit of visual cohesion and uh, bringing back the piece, so to say, making it less, um, well, less spotted and um, more homogenic and more relaxed just visually. So to do that, I'm gonna just take the sandy tone, uh, which at the same time not only brings the whole thing together, and you will see what I mean in a sec if you can't imagine yet, so here it is. And now I smear it all over this thing, and I'm fast. I do not leave it where I just spilled it. I'm fast to dissipate it, right? So now you can barely, barely see it, but this tone was applied to black, but also to the green right here. So those two tones, which were 
uh, a long way uh, apart, a long distance apart, they are brought closer together now, right? We don't want to go as far as to just overpaint the entire thing so it no longer looks like camo at all. But it will get pretty close to that and you will see that when you later objectively look at the colors, those will be, well, it will be barely recognizable on our very distressed part that um, it was even ever a camo pattern uh, if you just look at the specific colors, like if you take the color picker tool in Photoshop and look at it, it will be like almost indistinguishable, but you will still see, your brain will still parse those colors as different because you will, um, you know what camo fabric looks like, your brain knows that, and even given a slight hint of it, you will already recognize that as camo pattern. And by the way, you don't need to start with sandy tone. Uh, you can do it in any order. So right now I'm uh, adding some white and I'm distributing it like semi-evenly. Uh, you don't need to strive to make it super even, uh, but look at this. If I apply it to white, uh, sorry, to black, then it's really starting to be less aggressive. So what we want to do here is really make our fabric um, less aggressive so that the pattern itself doesn't um, serve as the main attraction in our costume, right? Because on top of this, we want decorations, we want uh, maybe some patches going on, we want all kinds of things. We don't want this aggressive, uh, in a purely visual sense, aggressive uh, camo pattern to be our main attraction, to grab all the visual attention. And that's what strong color contrasts like we have uh, tend to do. That is the main problem with camo aesthetically, because a lot of times it just doesn't look that great um, unless you really want to tell the story of a very realistic soldier, be because then it's like, yeah, that's what it looks like. But it was never designed with great looks um, in mind, although I don't argue that like it's ugly or whatever, and it's not. I, I like camo. It's just that, you know, in a lot of post-apocalyptic scenarios, you need to do what I'm doing right now for it to look actually good and actually like it has seen stuff. So here is some swamp green. I'm gonna apply this everywhere. You don't need to do that, by the way. Like any specific color I'm using right now, basically I'm going with nature palette. It can be anything, doesn't have to be this specific green or a green at all. Uh, it just has to be something that is kind of an averaging out, uh, has an averaging out effect on these spots. We want to average those spots out. I actually don't like the green very much, although, hmm, this serves as a great base layer, actually. And by base layer, I mean like this one coat, this one tone, of paint, it really does a good job at averaging things out. It doesn't look specifically dramatic, but remember, this is exactly what I said, we don't want it to look dramatic in, in the sense of how contrasted those colors are right where we look at this. And let's have a quick comparison already, like, we've applied a couple of coats here, right? I'm, I'm gonna apply one more, and then we'll flip this thing over and see what it looks like on the other side, where we haven't applied anything yet. So, take a good look at how those colors look, and it still looks like camo, right? Flip. Oh, look how aggressive this is. So spotty, so aggressive, especially the blacks, wow. And those greens really pop, and all of that really pops. And this is already looking much more worn, much more relaxed. So this is actually, uh, like, for some situations you could leave it like this. This just looks like a modern soldier who has seen a couple of days in the wild and uh, didn't wash his pants a lot, you know? So this just looks like someone from a training exercise, really, in the modern army. So, um, like, looking like this, they would send them to wash, but they would look like this and they would actually look a lot worse. Um, like, this, this always gets me when people go like, oh, but this is like, I'm a, in a special elite tactical unit and blah. Like, do you guys wash your clothes every day, all day? <laughs> because real elite tactical units and whatever also do get dirty. It will look like more like this and less like 
completely brand new. Like, why would you be completely brand new even in a non-apocalyptic, like, let's say, just a war movie or something? Like, stuff gets dirty. Ask a real soldier who has actually seen a lot of combat and stuff. Like, stuff gets dirty fast. And I'm not saying there is no place at all. Again, I'm never saying that there is no place at all for look X or technique Y or whatever. Um, well, in most cases, <laughs> some things are really stupid and have no place at all. But this, like, completely brand, uh, brand new camo fabric, of course it has a place. Like, maybe in your story someone found it in a bunker, you know, but um, do not use it as an excuse, you know. Like, if you're making a movie and some people who look uh, really messed up and have distressed clothes and everything's breaking down and then they find the bunker and find those brand new uniforms, uh, yeah, okay have them look a bit new at the start, but get over it fast, you know? Dirt tells a story. It's it's not because we want to look dirty that we do this, it's because we want to tell a story. So, uh, as you can see here, I'm just applying layer by layer by layer of those fabric paints, making this thing look more and more homogenic, more and more relaxed, more and more like a single tone. And I'm gonna apply some black here as well. Not a lot, because as you can see, it darkens the whole thing real, real fast. And again, uh, I, I, I will be flipping it over now and again. So this is what it looks like new. It is easy to lose track of how much you've already applied, yet there is still so much more, more to go, just like in life. Oh my god, am I being philosophical here? So let's really drown it in this beautiful, sandy, dirty tone. And by the way, uh, the one thing I didn't do yet, but will do now, actually I'm supposed to do it before I even start with this process, is, of course, as some of you might have guessed, applying some distressing mechanical effects. So I'm gonna tear this up a bit. To all of you in elite units on your LARPs, you will see some action, or your character would have seen some action, and damage like this... I'm gonna make it a bit brighter for you. Damage like this... Or it's torn a bit, wait, wait, maybe you can see it on the black. I'm gonna add it here. Damage like this is quite reasonable. And what happens if we apply dirt on top of a torn piece of uh, fabric like this with the threads and everything? Let's look at that. Here it is. Ah, beautiful. Now this looks like it, it was torn and then there was some sludge applied to it in combat or whatever. Now this looks more like something that has been used. I'm gonna add another rip here. And for this portion, I'm gonna leave it at that. So I'm gonna just fold this over. So this is gonna be our um, not too badly distressed part, right? And we will just tuck it away. And I'll continue working on this. This part is gonna be really, really badly distressed. And when you work on an actual costume rather than a demo piece of fabric, of course, edges, edge wear, really important. You want to distress your edges. Like this, ah, look at that, beautiful. Of course, if you have a pair of pants or a jacket or whatever, you don't want to apply all of the holes to the crotch area or knees or whatever. And if you want to see how I handle pants specifically, see my video about pants. Um, but in general, if you are applying some damage, some effects can be like wherever, but I recommend applying a lot of effects to the edges, like edge wear is a term of art. Edge wear is important. So we don't want to destroy this completely. But 
of this is starting to look great. Uh, don't worry if you can see it real well. I will uh, take the camera from another angle later. Uh, for now, just watch what I'm gonna do now, which is apply some black. And by the way, of course, uh, wear gloves when doing this, because otherwise your hands are gonna be really dirty, and you don't want that. So, now this is a lot of paint. Drown, drown, drown. Especially those black areas need a bit of love. All right, now that we're um, going towards the end of our journey, we're not there yet, but we are nearing it, we want to start um, not just drowning everything uniformly, like I have been doing now, although I will do that a couple more times. But later towards the end we want to make moves like this, which just leave an area distressed, something like that. Oh, I will actually leave it, I really like what I'm seeing right now. So this has seen some, maybe you leaned against the wall and then it rained and that, all of that caked in, stuff like that, looks beautiful. And I'm gonna apply another layer of this dirt paint here. So this is really nearing completion here. Any more than this, and you really start losing the fact that it is camo fabric. Which is, by the way, another technique of its own. Maybe you have a pair of camo pants or whatever, or jacket, and you don't want the camo look, but you want it to look like something that used to be camo a very, very, very long time ago, but has been worn out, you can apply more and more and more layers until it's uniform or almost uniform and the whole camo pattern disappears. But this is kind of just like turning it in, into another thing altogether, right? What I want to show in this video is how to keep it as a camo look, but make it a cool camo look, which, um, which shows just how much this soldier has been through or this survivor or whoever it is you're portraying so this is really <laughs> drowned in paint right now like this is wet but i insist on having some some white that is not uniformly dissipated and to top it off i'm gonna apply some black not a lot of it just a tiny bit here and there, oh yes. This is beautiful. Now, what we could also do, and I'm gonna wipe this off here, because I don't need that excess paint on my hands anymore. What we can also do is, uh, and you should only do this outside or in a well-ventilated area, this is uh, dust. I'm, I'm just gonna, well, I'm just gonna put on my COVID mask, which is a N95 respirator. It's not the best choice, uh, really you should be wearing something more massive that protects well from dust such as this, but I'm gonna try and not make it airborne really. Yeah, all right, this works. Now this is not in the air right now and I hope it remains such. Uh, this dust will stick to the paint and I'm gonna fold it over like this and I'm gonna spread it out a bit. Oh, yes. Yeah, all right. I've uh, actually managed to not get anything airborne, but again, uh, whenever you do something like this, do it outside or in a well-ventilated area and wear a mask. So, this right here looks beautiful. So now let us compare directly how it looks. Are we ready? I'm gonna zoom in a bit more. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so if we look just at this square right here, does this look like camo to you? I think it does. But please notice how this is all still very homogenic, very evened out. There are some effects that are definitely not camo fabric itself, but torn effects and this beautiful dust effect here, uh, which will, as I've said, it, when the paint dries, the dust will stay there because it will be bound by the paint to the fabric. Uh, so this 
is what a very distressed camo fabric that still looks like camo fabric looks like. Folding out to something that is uh, rather used and you immediately can see a difference and this almost looks new, right? So one thing about camo fabric is it eats a lot of detail and if you're doing it for the camera such as photos or film Cameras also eat detail for breakfast, so uh, a lot of times in all of those movies and series you watch, the costumes that they have, if they're dirty, they're like really super dirty in real life, and the camera will eat some of that detail, and it will turn out just dirty enough. So in the real world, they look a bit too dirty, if you know what I mean. So this right here, however, still, upon a closer inspection, it looks worn, it looks torn, it looks distressed, it looks like it has seen action. Like, I would accept this as a soldier in the post-apocalyptic world that has not been going on for too long yet. And not too long by that, I mean a couple of weeks, okay? Because in a couple of months, you're looking like this, right? Not a couple of years, not a couple of uh, centuries, but a couple of months. This, a couple of days to a couple of weeks. And let us uh, remove the duct tape now and that will be completely brand new quote unquote although i think this jacket is technically used but you really cannot see it you know it, it still looks brand new so this is actually what the new fabric looks like and we have a full scale version of it here this is new this is not and you can see especially those super high uh, highlights, oh sorry, super high green highlights, they are kind of drowned out here, um, and so on. Um, also the blacks are a bit muted, like look at the difference between this black and this black. It's subtle, but it's there, you can see that this one is actually a bit dirty. Alright, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, then subscribe to the channel, check out the Nuclear Snail community group in the video description, and also support me on Patreon because that helps me a lot. I will see you in the next episode, have fun with your camo fabric, use it uh, well, and um, have fun crafting. Until then, hail the snail and see ya!